What we're offering is, is the latest version of Gripen, the Gripen Echo uh, or E-Series. Uh, it is designed to counter the most advanced uh, threats uh, and uh, threat situations that we see uh, around us. Uh, it is uh, designed from the starting point as a true multi-role aircraft. And many claim they are multi-role, but Gripen was from the starting point designed for an aircraft, uh, sorry, an Air Force to be able to use uh, one single platform type for the broad variety of different tasks an Air Force uh, has. And uh, with Gripen E-Series, we offer the very latest uh, technology on board. There is no later aircraft design available on the market. And uh, we have worked a lot to make sure that not only today and with, with the coming years here, but also for the long term, uh, it shall be uh, in a smooth and easy way possible to further enhance uh, and develop. So we've looked a lot upon that uh, and uh, I'll describe more about it. Uh, so we, we claim it's a future-proof design. Also, uh, it is important to make sure that we maximize the operational effect for the budget. Uh, I'll touch upon that as well. This is the way it looks like uh, inside the uh, Gripen E-Series. Uh, it's a very modern uh, aircraft system uh, with a high-end situational awareness. Uh, so uh, there is a big uh, display in the middle uh, presenting all the information to the pilot. <coughs> Uh, and uh, uh, you see also obviously helmet mounted display system so really the most advanced type of, um, of cockpit and information system that you can think of and uh, the, uh, uh, the most important here is that uh, nowadays with the E-Series uh, the pilot is not any longer controlling each sensor specifically uh, the pilot is uh, defining a volume of interest uh, in the air it may be a box in the air or a square on the ground, and that is uh, a way of uh, working with high-level commands so that the operator, the pilot, uh, gets help from the sensor control system on board uh, to use all the sensors in an optimal way. Uh, some are more accurate in distance, some are more accurate in bearing, and this is combined through advanced data fusion algorithms and a holistic uh, picture of the situational awareness is then presented. The pilot can define a number of um, uh, volumes of interest at the same time and follow them uh, both on the ground and in the air. And also uh, work together in a tactical air unit and use all the uh, sensors on board these aircraft in a combined way. So uh, it's uh, a fully integrated uh, mission system on board Gripen. Then, obviously, in addition to know what's happening out there, we also need weapons for deterrence and for effect in a target. And uh, we have taken the approach of the integrator to pick the best weapon systems from the best producers worldwide. And for us, flexibility is a key word here. Uh, we have a long range of different different weapon systems that we are offering, and I think the flexibility is, uh, is key. Uh, it is important to remember that the lifespan of weapons normally is shorter than the total lifespan of an aircraft system and that means uh, an operator tend to change and uh, install and integrate new weapons uh, a couple of times during a life cycle of 30 years and uh, we do this integration together with our customers and operators in a short period of time and uh, to a uh, reasonable cost. Then it's important obviously for our pilots to uh, uh, survive and to come back alive. With Gripen, we have probably one of the world's most advanced electronic warfare systems, the protection system uh, used uh, to uh, detect and, and also uh, to repel the negative effect that an incoming missile may have. We have a fully spherical coverage, 360 degrees around the aircraft, uh, with uh, advanced sensors and dispenser systems. And already today, with the operational Charlie Delta version of Gripen, probably you will see one of the most advanced EW systems on board a fighter aircraft. Uh, there are specific EW platforms out there, but talking about fighters, uh, we are truly excel within this area, and we take it yet a number of steps forward 
uh, with uh, Echo and Foxtrot. Electronic warfare systems uh, are also more and more used in active or offensive way nowadays. Uh, sometimes we refer to electronic attack and that means we use the energy uh, to um, jam or, or uh, um, paralyze the sensors of adversary aircraft or ground-based air defense systems so that they cannot see us, they cannot track us uh, and uh, we make life uh, hard for the adversary. On board uh, the, the, the GRIP and uh, the, the onboard electronic warfare system, we already have electronic attack capability integrated. And uh, if and when needed, we can also complement it with additional POG uh, and decoy systems to it, if we want to broaden the frequency range or have even greater effect. So electronic warfare, that's an area uh, where we are excelling. Then, sensors and weapons aside, um, we need to be able to work in the everyday uh, context. Ripon is designed for easy maintenance and harsh conditions. It's designed to be handled by conscript mechanics. Uh, a turnaround is being uh, done, meaning the equivalent of a Formula One pit stop, within less than 10 minutes, with one certified technician and five conscript mechanics, and no one else even comes near that figure, so we are extremely proud of that. An engine change can be done within less than one hour, and that's also extremely important to make sure that uh, Gripen can be kept up in the air and it's uh, extremely easy to, to service. May I ask about the 10 minute turnaround time? Is that the engine running? Uh, the yeah, the, uh, it, it can be used with engine running, we can do hot refueling, but no, you don't, have the, you don't need to have the engine running to, to the 10 minutes. Or 10 minutes. So it depends, for some configurations, uh, if you have a, a heavy load, uh, air to ground, it may take uh, slightly longer, but more or less everything you do within 10 and 20 minutes, depending on configuration. This example is an air to air, full refueling and rearming. And then also, we are quite many here, so we, we will try to, to save the questions to, uh, to the end of, of the briefing. Uh, but I didn't say that, so it's, it's fully okay. Furthermore, Gripen is designed for uh, dispersed uh, use at road bases. Uh, it is built uh, so that uh, no fixed installations are required. The only thing needed is uh, a, an 800 meter long straight highway strip. And this means that uh, uh, we can use all the forward and remote operating bases of Finland and we can easily also construct many more uh, for more redundancy and uh, more survivability. Um, and, uh, well, no fixed installations means no arresting wires or that type of systems. And this is contributing to the survivability. Often uh, when we look at operational capability, we look at mission execution, what sensors and weapons do we have? And obviously we need to look at survivability, I talk about the electronic warfare system. But uh, the two uh, lower headlines, the availability and cost efficiency also comes in. Uh, Gripen is designed to be extremely available and that means we can optimize the number of sorties that you can get out of, of each and every aircraft that you will buy. And the cost efficiency of Gripen will also mean that for a certain amount of money that you decide to spend, uh, you will be able to either afford to buy more aircraft and or uh, to afford to fly them more. So there are many factors building up the total operational capability that you get when you buy a fighter aircraft. And we feel that this is also the approach that the HX program is taken clearly. We think that is uh, very wise. I talked about that uh, Gripen is future-proofed. Um, no matter how lovely and perfect system we have today, things change. There will be new threat systems in the future. We need to cope with that and be able to adapt to an ever-changing situation. Gripen is designed for this. Uh, traditionally, uh, in this business, people may talk about midlife upgrades. You take a big leap once or twice during the life cycle of the air crop system. Uh, from the starting point of Britain, we have adopted a uh, um, stepwise and continuous development philosophy uh, so that every three years we have been uh, uh, coming with a new release and that has shown to be very efficient to minimize uh, the discrepancy between 
the needs we have, the requirements, and the actual capability on board the aircraft. Now, with Gripen Echo Foxtrot, we take this yet another step. With a new uh, avionics system, where we separate uh, the flight critical part of the software from the mission related functions, uh, we can do these upgrades uh, much easier uh, on the tactical side without having to interfere with and uh, going through cumbersome, uh, time consuming and costly recertification and revalidation of flight critical related software that we don't really touch or need to touch because there is a much higher rate of change and needs to change on the tactical side. So this is a, a completely new way of thinking. Um, as far as we know, we are the only ones that have taken this approach and we are sure it will pay off a lot uh, in the future uh, where we need to be more and more agile. And I'll show you a short film describing a little bit of this perspective. We're standing today in front of the truly unique aircraft. It's actually, for me personally, quite emotional. And for the untrained eye, the viewer don't really see the difference from previous aircraft. But the heart and soul of this machine is truly amazing. The future of air combat uh, will be even more complex than it is today. And to be able to create the air power that Gripen creates today and make that true in the future as well, we have to make it future-proof. To be able to be future-proof, it's not enough that this aircraft has the coolest software and the coolest computers today. I want to be able to give our pilots the best available computers on the market for one year, two years, five years, ten years. We have built a system adaptable for the future. The winner of tomorrow's air combat will be the one that's able to adapt to present circumstances, gets ahead of the enemy, and then can shift a strike from unexpected directions. Traditionally, adding more software to a fighter jet requires a lot of verification, even on the existing platform. But what you're looking at here is the world's first reconfigurable avionics platform qualified to meet the highest safety and security standards. Reconfigurable means that we can add applications without having to re-qualify the platform. We can even change hardware without affecting the overall application layer, just leaving the aircraft with a lot more computer power. The computational power in this aircraft allows for the use of today's most demanding algorithms, such as deep learning algorithms and the complex algorithms used for the sensor fusion, utilizing all the new sensors we have in the aircraft and also providing synergy from them. We are building to make this fire as good as possible today, but what we also know is that we want it to stay relevant for a long period of time. And we don't know what the fight will look like in 30, 40 years from now. To ensure that we have a fighter that's still relevant, we are building it so we easily can upgrade it and use the latest and best technology out there when it comes to hardware and also when it comes to algorithms. That allows us to break the opponent's decision loop, and when you do that, you will win. So this is really something that we are extremely proud of and something that uh, we are the only ones to offer today. We think it is uh, something extremely important for the future. The Gripen system uh, is a proven and uh, mature one in operational use by many uh, countries around the world uh, with more than 250,000 flight hours. Uh, and uh, on top of that, uh, we're, we're working now with the uh, E-Series or Echo Foxtrot latest version.